Hey everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel, M. Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to learn how to paint a sunset over the ocean and how to paint a sailboat. We're going to teach you how to block it in, how to use colours, warm colours and cool colours to create highlights and shadows, how to put detail over the top so you can paint this gorgeous sunset over the ocean with a beautiful yacht sailing away. So let's get into it. So a nice easy painting tutorial today, we're going to use the following colours, they are titanium white, cad yellow, matte orange, rose pink, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, iris purple, burnt umber and ivory black. Now I've got a burnt sienna stained canvas that I've put a horizon with chalk halfway across the canvas and we're going to have a sailboat here that I've painted in cobalt blue. I've just done a little outline and again I've used chalk just to have a focus point where we're going to have the sun setting in the far distance. So we're going to learn how to paint a sunset and how to paint a sailboat. So if you'd like to pause the video please help yourself and you can pause it and jot down the outline and away we will go. So the first thing we're going to do is just get some titanium white and we're just going to create a little circle behind the main sail of our sailboat and this is going to be our sun. So all I'm doing is I'm just blocking in with a big dollop of titanium white some white for the sun and then all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of cad yellow to some white and just create a creamy sort of Naples yellow and just create a glow around that sun. Don't worry if it's messy, we just want to block it in with the colours. So all we're doing, we're just creating a lighter shade of yellow to create a glow. And then we're just going to use pure cad yellow around that glow, just like a circle. Just to create a nice sun effect, just so it looks like the sun is setting. There we go. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take some orange. Now I always use matte orange, you can use cad orange, they are literally the same. Matte orange just dries a bit more matte and it's a bit more darker, that's why I like to use it. But all we're going to do, we're going to mix some yellow and orange together. More yellow than orange please, because orange is very, very powerful. So just a little bit of orange and lots of yellow. And you should get this golden yellow. So look at that, it's like a really bright golden yellow. And all we're going to do is again go round in a circle and just create that glow. So once you've made a little circle, we're going to create the sky around our glowing sun. So what we're going to do, we're going to swap over to a big brush. Um, it's not anything special with this brush, it's just a large brush. It's just easier to block in large surfaces. And all I'm going to do is just take some bright orange and a little bit of purple. Now I use iris purple, um, I appreciate not everyone can get it. You can add purple and cobalt blue together to get a cool purple, because all it is is a cool purple. And what we're doing, we're just adding orange and purple together and a little bit of white. So if you think things like orange and yellows and pinks are really, really good for heat and highlights and to emphasize sort of a glow around the sun and things like blues and purples are really, really good for shadows. So because that sun is so bright, we want to use heat, so we want to use an orange colour. So just by having some orange, a little bit of purple and some white, we're just creating this light pastel colour either side. So this, uh, on the horizon, you get the sun sort of glowing and then you get this lovely sort of darker colour either side. Now don't worry if you go over your chalk, that's the great thing about chalk, it doesn't leave any dirty marks. So it's really, really good for like measuring things like your horizons and stuff. So we can put that back later. And all I'm going to do, look, I'm just going to add a little bit more heat. So I'm just going to add a little bit more orange to the mix. And just around the sun, look, I'm just going to make it a little bit darker to emphasize that glow. So just either side. And then I think it's still a bit too harsh. I'm just going to put some of that some of that orange and white, I think it's not bright enough, so we're going to add some of that yellow and orange. So basically, orange, yellow and a little bit of white. And just try to match your glow into and blend it, look, just gently blend it from the middle going outwards to either side. So all I'm doing 
is I'm just going back and forth. I've got hardly any pressure on my brush and I'm just letting it fade out into the darker shade. See how that works? So it just looks like that glow is cooling off either side. There we go. So all I'm doing, just trying to work on my transitions. So we've got this lovely glow in the middle and then we've got it sort of fading out either side. So I'm going to take some cat yellow and some white. So cat yellow and white. And I'm going to add a little bit of purple, just a dot just to mute it make it a bit more earthy and a little bit of orange for some heat just a tiny bit because remember orange is really really strong so you don't need much and i'm just going to create a lighter shade a sort of a yellowy orange like a pastel yellowy orange and all i'm going to do because it's got plenty of white it's very pastel i'm just with my brush i'm just going to gently smooth around the glow of the sun and again, just make it look like the sky is just sort of fading off. I kind of want a little bit of darker color in that orange at the base of the horizon. You always sort of get sort of low clouds. And you get that sort of glowing hum at the at the base of the horizon. So all we're doing, look, we're just going round really gently. We're not worrying about so much blending at all right now. We'll go back to it. We just want to create this nice glow. So there we go, we've got all that area blocked in, we've got this lovely glow in the middle and we're going to clean our brush and we're going to get some white and some cerulean blue. So lots and lots of white, very very pastel and some cerulean blue, a little bit of cobalt blue, just a smidge. So cerulean blue is more turquoise and cobalt blue is much cooler. So we just want a little bit of each and lots and lots of white, but probably a little bit more cerulean blue than cobalt blue. And then we're just gonna load up our brush. Now it's all mixed, we've got this lovely pastel light blue. And then all we're gonna do, we're just gonna leave a tiny gap between the yellow and the light blue. Now the reason we're leaving a tiny gap, of kind of leaving like a millimeter, is I don't wanna get green. Look, I don't wanna mix it together. So I don't wanna get a green sunset. So what you can do, if you're a little bit nervous, if you don't want it to mix, um, you can just dry your work with a hair dryer or just let it air dry just before you put this blue on. So if you're nervous at home and you don't want the colors to mix, just dry that orange and that yellow area first and then go and use some blue around it. So we've got this light pastel blue. And again, just like the sunset, as the sky gets cooler, it gets darker as it moves up. So we've got cerulean blue, cobalt blue. We're gonna add a little bit of purple just to cool it even more and just a bit less white. Still plenty of white because it's still very, very pastel, but look, it's just a little bit darker. Look, just a shade darker because it's got a little bit more cobalt blue and it's got a little bit of purple in it. Just a hint. And all we're gonna do, look, we're gonna create our X shapes with our brush. We're going to darken our corners just to frame the painting. We just come down and blend it into that lighter shade. And then we get a nice framed corners. And we've got this nice blend. So all I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take some titanium white and straight down from the sun. So coming straight down underneath the sun. I'm just going to draw a big white line so it'll create the shimmer on the ocean. And then we're going to get some yellow and either side of that white we're just going to come down we're just going to gently blend it just a tiny bit so we get that sort of yellow and white colour. I'm just going over my sail here but we just want to block in the ocean water. So you go from white to yellow and white to bright cad yellow. So just like the sky, we're trying to match it. And then just like the sky, we're going to go from yellow to yellow and orange. So more yellow than orange. So about here, whatnot. And what we're trying to do, if you imagine the sun when it's setting, it sort of shimmers because it's just hovering above the ocean. It sort of 
gives this gorgeous shimmer and you get this sort of like a torch effect where it looks like it's just shimmering towards you. So because we've got our yacht in the middle, we want to have this central point so everyone looks at it. And we can have look, we can have this shimmer sort of coming down. So all we're doing, look, we're going from white to white and yellow to yellow and orange. So we're just getting darker either side. And then we're going to add a tiny bit more orange. Still got some yellow, but a tiny bit more orange. So we're getting darker. So there we go. So exactly the same as the sky. We're just trying to match the colours. So think of a mirror. So here we go. We do it. If we do it one side, we're going to do it the other side. And as you can see, the great thing is that cobalt blue outline is still there. It's really cool. We can just paint over it. It's an easy trick for you guys at home. If you create an outline in cobalt blue first, you can then just paint over it and it will shine through and then you can put the detail on over the top. And then all we're going to do, I'm just going to put a bit of wall on my brush. It's very, very hot here in London. It's a heat wave in London. So all my paint is drying, all my brushes are drying. All we're going to do, we're going to create sort of a T shape, sort of like a cross shape. So all I'm doing, I'm going up to where the water and the sky meet. And I'm just sort of blending in the colours. And I'm just going to a little bit more orange now. And a little bit of purple. Just to make it a little bit darker. Some white. So orange, a little bit of purple and some white. And a little bit of that yellow and orange just to make a darker cooler shade here we go so again it's just like the sky so where the sky and the ocean are meeting we're trying to meet it together and create the same colors and then while we've got that color we're going to just blend it into our orange and yellow so we're just coming down create this sort of cross shape so that coming down here we go just blend it all together And so we'll work on it and make it pretty later. We just want to block in everything. And then just like the sky, we want to use the cool colors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix a little bit of our blue into this orange. And we're going to create a sort of silver color. So we're just going to test it. So a little bit of silver, it's still a bit too light. And I'm just going back and forth and back and forth and creating our X shapes. I think it's still too light, so I'm just going to add a little bit more blue. Excuse me a minute, my my palette, as I say, keeps drying. It's so hot here. So what we want to do, we just want to add some of that pastel blue to our orange mix. And we just want to get cooler in our corners. So I think what I'm going to have to do is remix it. But we want to kind of match the sky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some cerulean blue, some cobalt blue and purple. So cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and purple. So all three of the dark colors. Lots of white. And I'm just gonna mix that into that orange that we just previously mixed. There we go. And then in the corners especially, because we wanna darken up our corners, look, we're just gonna get this nice dark blue we're just going back and forth, back and forth, look. If anyone's ever watched Bob Ross, Bob Ross is a master of this. Because what you do is you sort of come inwards towards the middle with your flat brush. So all I'm doing, I'm coming towards the middle and I'm just easing off the pressure as I go upwards in the painting. So I've I'm adding a lot more pressure at the bottom of the paint where you can see the paint is really, really thick. So look, I'm pushing down quite hard here and I'm just easing up Look as I go upwards and it just looks like it's fading out. So look, I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. So I'm putting lots of pressure at the bottom, but as I move up, move up into the painting, still coming across, so coming in from the sides of the paintings towards the middle and just easing up on the pressure and because you ease up on the pressure 
you get less paint and it looks less dark. So we've got this lovely central point, we've got this blocked in painting, we've got this shimmer of light, we've got this glow around the sun and this glow towards our yacht, and then we've got our darkened corners. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start putting all the detail over the top. Now it's all blocked in and dry and we can start making everything look really professional and pretty. So first I'm just going to block back in my sun, so I'm just going to put my big dollop of white and the same here on the ocean. So what I've matched in the sky, I'm just going to go over the top. And you can see here, just by adding a second layer of paint, you can make your acrylics look much more pretty and much more vibrant. So look, if we just do the same with some cad yellow, look how brighter that looks, just adding a second layer of paint. So that is a trick with acrylics. If you just literally go over the top, you can make everything look so much more vibrant, just giving it a second layer of paint once it's dry. And then we're going to mix some orange and yellow again. And we're just going to go over the top. And we're just going to make our glow a little bit more pretty now. We're just going to start blending everything. So we're just trying to make all the blending look a bit more seamless now. So it's white to yellow to orange and yellow. We'll just try that lovely central glow. And then on the horizon, I'm just going to come out from the middle and again, just ease up on the pressure. I'm just going to gently blend that so it looks like it's fading out. And the same this side. So just easing up on the pressure. Oh, I think I put too much water on my brush now. I've got a big streak there. On, but don't worry, we can go over that. If you put too much water, you can see here, you get a big line sometimes where the paint doesn't take to the canvas. So don't put too much water on your brush like me. It's a rookie mistake that was. So I'm just gonna add some of the um, light blue that we mixed earlier. So excuse me, it's on camera. A bit, all it was was um, cerulean blue, cobalt blue and white. And all I'm gonna do is just as they meet, I'm just going to create sort of little gaps in the sky, just where the light blue and the orange mix. Because it's got plenty of white, so all it is is lots of white, cerulean blue, and cobalt blue. We're just mixing the two areas together, just so there's not so much of a jump. So we can do it here. And while we've got that colour, we can actually turn it into some clouds. So why not have some clouds? So we'll just link this area together and then let's put some clouds. So all I'm doing is just creating some little marshmallow shapes. These could be some clouds going off into the corners. Because I want the sun to be the central focus and I want the viewer to look at the yacht or the sailboat. I sort of want these sort of clouds going off into the corners at an angle and that will get again draw people's eyes towards the middle by having them sort of at either side sort of fading off either side so why not create some outlines here they could be going towards the corners so just take your time you can see clearly now because it's um, lots of white with a hint of the two blues in the cerulean and the cobalt blue, it's really, really subtle. So you can see where the orange and the, the darker blue sky meets now, it hard, you can hardly notice it. So that's what I was saying about acrylics. Sometimes you just have to go over them twice just to make them more pronounced and more vibrant. So that we're just going over the top just make him look a little bit brighter, creating that glow. Just while it dries, just go over the top. So we're going to take some purple. So plenty of purple. And a little bit of cobalt blue, if you haven't got purple. The iris purple. And we're just going to add some brown to the mix. So cool purple, so purple and cobalt blue. And a little bit of brown. 
got a little bit of orange just to make it more hot in color and tone and a little bit of white and we're just going to create a gray so we're just going to create this nice gray got a tiny bit of the rose pink again just as some heat so if you think orange and pink create the heat and we should have this nice pastel gray here it's like a pastel sort of lavender gray and all we're going to do really again subtle we want to create some clouds that are far off into the distance so the reason we're using this nice pastel pinky gray is we don't want to have it really dark because if it was really dark it would bring it towards the viewer so by having a really pastel color we can create some of these little clouds that sort of sit on the horizon normally you have some right where the horizon and the ocean meet so where the sunset and the ocean meet you tend to have these little clouds so just by using this pastel color here we can just have them fade in a way so always remember acrylics dry darker they have this weird thing where when you put them on the canvas they look quite bright and then they always dry a bit matte and they always dry a bit darker so if your clouds do dry dark, you can just go over them with a bit more white, just lighten them up. So what I'm doing, look, I'm just creating little shapes. I've got a little fine liner brush here. I'm just creating little fluffy clouds off in the distance. And then if we've done some on one side, we've got to do it on the other side. Secret with clouds, just try to make them all different shapes and sizes. Don't have all of them the same. So look, we could have a big one this side, why not? And they have some ones breaking apart from it. So just try to have them all different random shapes. Some big, some small. Some thin, some fat. Let's have some up the top here. Could have a big one up here, why not? Same here, this could be the areas that are a bit in the shade. Got some here breaking away. So just take your time. I think, let's have one up here in the corner. I think we need a big one over this side, so why not? Put a big blob here and then a little one in this gap because this area is a bit boring so let's just have some breaking away over here so now i kind of know where everything is i'm just going to put some here on the horizon just so it all matches so we've got some either side and again by having sort of darker things in the corners we're drawing your eye towards that sun so now we've got these clouds they're all sort of pointing towards that sun you see how that works so we're going to get some white and some orange and a little bit of yellow so white orange tiny bit of yellow we're just going to make a really bright pastel orange a bit more yellow, why not? And we're just going to put a little highlight colour on. We're just going to test it. There we go. It's a kind of like a pinky light sort of skin colour, I guess. So it's sort of the colour of my fingers, if you see what I mean. And all I'm doing, I'm just going to outline some of the clouds and create some highlights. So all we're doing, we're creating all the sort of layers of the foundation, if you see what I mean. We've got our glowing sun. We've got our far off now clouds in that sort of grey purple. And now another layer, what we're doing, we're putting some of these warm highlights. So we haven't got this big jump 
between orange and blue. So we're using this sort of nice sort of pastel orange to outline some of our clouds, just to sort of link the two areas together, you see? Sort of bridge the two areas. Because if you think blue is really cool and orange is really warm, we're trying to sort of bridge the two together. And then what we'll do is we'll put the really bright highlights over the top. But we're just using this colours first just to sort of merge the two areas together. So all I'm doing, look, I've just got a fine liner. And I'm just creating little shapes around my cloud. Just to make them look bobbly and give them a nice bright outline. So this could be all the areas of the sunlight that sort of hits the cloud and you get that lovely sort of glow around them, that outline. And it's cool as well because you can change shape of your clouds, you can make them into sort of things. So let's just outline this one. And then have a few more where it joins in with this glow. some outline in this one so look all I'm doing is just outline it it's really easy if you use a thin brush or a small brush it's even easier because then you can just go around it it's like drawing let's put a little outline on this little one and this one here Just blending these two areas together. I'm just going to put the same this side. Okay, so we've got these darkened clouds, and then we've got these sort of orangey highlights now, these sort of neutral tones that sort of bridge the area together. So now we're going to put some shadows, and then we're going to put some really bright highlights. So we're going to put some really dark shadows and really bright highlights to sort of merge the two areas together. So we're going to mix this cool purple and brown. So cool purple, so this Irish purple. So purple, cobalt blue, and brown. And we're going to make a darker gray. And what we're going to do is in the far off corner, so if you imagine, see this far corner, so the far right hand corner, this is really far from the sun. So it's almost going to be a bit more darker because it's getting less sunlight. And by going, see here on the edges, we can make it look more shadowy and more dark. So look, if we go here on the edges, look, this area is going to be a bit more in the shade, whereas the areas in the middle could be a bit more in the sun. And again, what it does is it points towards the middle. See, look how it brings you towards the middle. So if we've done it on one side, we're going to do it on the other side. So we're just going to make these edges a bit darker. So all these clouds are sort of darker on the, on the edges. And they're getting lighter now. All our transitions get lighter as they move towards the middle. So again, it's really pastel. It's not dark. We don't want to, bring, we don't want to put loads of black or something and bring it really close towards the viewer. We still want all these colors to be really soft. So look, even if I add a little bit darker shade, so just blue and brown, make it a little bit darker. I don't want to make it too dark because you see how it brings it forward. So if you want to darken things up, just have less white. And if you want to lighten things up, just add more white. So yellow and orange mixed together. There we go. And then all we're gonna do is add a bit of white to that mix. So yellow, orange, and white. And we're just gonna create a nice bright highlight color now. So now we've got these darkest shadows. We're gonna create a sort of polarity to that and have brighter highlights. So again, we're just doing the outline trick. 
We're just creating little splodges kind of around these clouds. So like you're saying, a lot of painting is just taking your time and having patience. If you work on areas and you add things, you just want to take your time and do each step. So we're just creating these glows. We can have a look a few ones that are sort of breaking away. So what I'm just doing is creating little splats, little shapes. Same up here. Just try to smooth everything out. So it's looking all pretty. So I'm really liking the glow. I'm really liking the darkened corners, and I really like the juxtaposition between the warms and the and the cools. So I'm going to get some bright white and a tiny bit of yellow and create this color. So if you want to add more yellow, you can get the darker shade, but I want predominantly white and a dot of cad yellow. So predominantly titanium white and a dot of cad yellow. And we're going to create this just off white, just slightly off white. And we're going to create a really bright highlight now. So these are the areas that are almost getting bleached with the sun. So they're almost sparkling, just like on the ocean where that sunlight is so strong. They're really, really bright. And again, because the white with a little hint of yellow is so pastel, here when we're laying it down, look, with this thick paint, it looks really, really bright. But as it dries, it will suck up some of the color of the highlights from underneath. So if we have to go over it twice, you have to go over it twice. It's just sometimes that's the payoff just to make it look more bright. And we want them really bright because we want our highlights to look really vibrant. So as I say, just take your time. Just think where the sun's going to be hitting. You can create little breakaway ones. You can create outlines. So all it is is lots and lots of white with dot of cad yellow. So just trying to go around the edges, make these edges look like they're sparkling in the sun. And then to make the dark shade, you just have more cad yellow. Still got plenty of white, but just more cad yellow. And then what you can do. If you use a just pure white for your sun, with this yellow and white, you can just go around and create a circle around it, and that gives that lovely sort of glow effect. Look, so just using yellow and white before the cad yellow, you can just create that nice sort of glow. Look at that. So you go from white to yellow and white to pure yellow to orange and yellow to orange. So you're just going from the really intense white into the light white and yellow. And as I say, look, just by going over the top of your highlights twice, because that acrylic paint is picking up the underpaint of the other highlights and the blue in the sky, if you have to go over it twice, you just have to go over it twice. But it does make them look much more brilliant. So just taking your time and just going over the top reworking areas it's definitely worth it and using thicker paint as well so not having as much water but just having complete blocks of paint you can just reapply these highlights and just really put the paint on and make them look really really nice you can have some coming down here it's gonna be highlighted on this cloud and the same over here, so this could be getting lots of sunlight. Yeah, 
page here. So look, sometimes when you're painting it, look, it doesn't even take because the other color is a bit more domineering. So if you have to go over it, you have to go over it. So look, just by going over it again, you can make it look much harsher. Same in this area, look. I think it's not quite dry. But that sky is starting to look really, really cool and really, really, really realistic. The sky is always the hardest part in the tutorials because you're gauging all the sunlight. So what I'm doing here is getting some bright cad yellow and just around the sun, I'm just outlining the clouds that are nearest to the sun. And the reason I'm using um, the cad yellow, I'll zoom in so you can see it closer in a minute, is to make it look really electrifying and look like the sun is just piercing through those clouds and they're almost on fire with that heat. So by using that cad yellow, you can sort of implement that. So if I zoom in for you so you can see. So look, all I'm doing, if you move me chubby hand, all I'm doing is just going around them with a fine liner, just outlining these purple clouds, with bright cad yellow, no other color, just bright cad yellow. And because we've got that lovely orangey background, they really stand out against it. So just a hint of added detail. Just to draw you into the middle. Yes, yeah, so as I was saying, in all the tutorials, the sky is the hardest bit. And once you nail the sky and you you nail the underpainting, so we've, we've got this really nice glow on our ocean, adding all the detail on top is the easy bit. So well done for sticking with it. Well done for trying. And all I'm doing, look, I'm just getting some of that white with the dot of yellow, just nearest the sun again. Just creating some really sharp highlights. And then to put some finishing touches on it, we're gonna dry our painting. So my painting is completely dry and we're gonna get some baby wipes handy. Now the reason we're gonna have some baby wipes or a wet cloth handy is we're gonna do some sunbeams. So I'm gonna teach you how to do some sunbeams. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix lots and lots of white with a dot of yellow to create this off white again. We're gonna get a paper towel and we're gonna, I've got a dry brush and I've wiped off 99% of the paint. So I've just got hardly any. And all I'm gonna do is just create some diagonal lines that are really, really chalky. Oh, but I had black paint on my fingers. That was a mistake. So look, the reason I was saying to have some baby wipes handy is if you make a mistake and your painting's nice and dry, like me, look, you can just wipe it away. And that is a great thing about acrylic painting. They're so easy for beginners. They're perfect for beginners because you can paint in stages. So by drying your work with a hairdryer before you move on to each stage, and then having some baby wipes handy. If you do make a mistake, you can just wipe it away what you painted and your painting will still be there underneath. So all I'm doing, look, I've got a dry brush. I've got barely any paint. I'm wiping most of the paint off onto that kitchen roll. And then all I'm doing with that chalky residue is just pushing down and just creating some really nice little sunbeams all coming out from the center. So look, just come down diagonally that chalky residue that's hardly any on my brush. So we can have one in the middle. There we go. So these are all the sort of sunlight piecing through the sky. And you can even look shade areas. So you can make areas look softer, look like they're in the sunlight. So, you can, so think of like a crayon got no water on a brush we just dip it in the paint and then we wipe away 99% of the paint off our brush we've just got this just chalky edge and look we can just shade areas it's called glazing I think the technique that's well that's what I call it <laughs> funny enough I can hear other people on other channels calling it now so they must be watching <laughs> stealing my mojo <laughs> glazing <laughs> So look, all we're doing is just going over the top, just colouring it in. Just like shading with a colour pencil or a crayon. 
which is really any pressure. And as I say, look, if you've got a baby wipe, if you don't like any areas, or you went a bit OTD or overboard, you can just wipe it away. That is the awesome thing. And look, you can even use the previous colours, just if you went a bit too hardcore, you can glaze that area. So you can use some yellow and orange, and do the same technique. So look, all I'm doing is just going over the top with some yellow and orange now, because I went a bit gung-ho. <laughs> so you can do the exact same technique with other colours. So if you wanted to lighten an area up, you can use some yellow and orange. If you wanted to darken or cool an area, you could use some blue. So there we go. And then if you want to make them brighter, look, you just go over the top of them. So just like we did with the highlights, if you want to make them really stand out, you just sometimes got to give them two coats of paint. So as I say, just practice at home. The best way to do it is if you have a completely dry brush and a completely clean brush. So make sure you clean it before you do it and just make sure it's completely dry. And you just have a bit of kitchen roll or toilet roll. And you just dab your brush in the paint and then just wipe it off near enough all the paint. And it should have, you can see here, if you look at the brush, it should have just sort of a fingerprint sort of mark on it of paint. And that's all you need. Because if you put a big dollop, you'll get a big streak across your painting. We don't want that. We just want that sort of chalky residue. And then where we've gone over and put these sunbeams in, what I'm going to do is just take some of that white and yellow and just put in some of our breakaway clouds just so they look like they're on top of some of the highlights and it pushes the um, sunbeams back. So we have some of the sunbeams in the foreground, some in the background. And just by putting some of these really bright clouds in, it just makes the sunbeams look like they're behind them. So a little trick. It just looks prettier as well. So that's what I was saying earlier. Just do each stage, think of a foundation. And if you rework areas, don't forget to come back and redo your highlights or anything. So if you did a bit of glazing or a bit of darkening or anything like that, just don't forget to come back here and just reapply your highlights if you want them to really pop and look bright. I think that sky looks like it's on fire. I think that looks awesome. So as I say, you don't have to go the same speed as the video. If you're struggling at home, just pause it, take your time. But I think our sky looks fantastic. So we've got this central point and we've got all these clouds pointing to the middle. So now we're going to do some waves. We're going to do all the detail on the oceans. And we've got this great shimmer. We've got this great sun and we've got this great underpainting with this um, orange and yellow going into the blues. So now we're going to create some waves. So we're going to mix some cool purple, so cobalt blue and purple, and brown together. So if you can add cobalt blue, a little bit of purple, and some brown, and you should get this nice browny gray. And what we're going to do, we're going to use a flat headed brush. So think of a flat headed screwdriver. And all we're going to do, we're going to create little divots. So we've got this lovely underpainting with the nice orange glow going into the cool blues either side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our flat brush to just create waves. So we're gonna teach you how to paint waves and make it look like wash. So as the boat cascades through the ocean, it creates this nice wash and you get this nice look of realism. So look, I'm loading up my brush and I'm using the sharp edge just to create these big thick divots. So look, if I push down, look, you get this almost like a line, like a minus sign. And all I'm gonna do, look, I'm just gonna create different divots. So again, just like the clouds, we want some big, some small, some at an angle. So look, you can have some going at an angle. Just don't want them all the same. And as you move up into the painting, so all I've done, I've put a little bit of painting tape at the top. I've just measured the horizon. As we go up, 
We don't want them as thick and we don't want them as bobbly. So I'll show you as we move up. So down here at the bottom, this is nearest to the viewer. We want these, these uh, waves and wash to look like the boat is plowing through the ocean. So we're going to create quite big chunky ones here. So look, we're going to have big chunky ones, sort of all different shapes, different angles. And then I'm going to load up my brush and have some look sort of breaking through. So it's really, really easy. And you see how that underpainting, where we've got that lovely glow with the colours, how it's starting to trick your eye. Now we're putting the waves over the top. You see how it's tricking your eye? So as I was saying, as you move towards the tape, as we go up into the painting, if you imagine all the waves nearest to the horizon, they're going to be really, really far away. So we're like sailing out to sea here. So what we want to do is just use that really sharp edge of that brush. It's a super thin edge and we just want to create kind of flat waves. So as we get closer to the horizon, we want Unlike these ones at the bottom that are really chunky, big blobs, we want to create just more like straight lines. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just creating really thin straight lines. Again, all just different sizes and little gaps. But look, you can barely see them. You see how sharp they are? They're just little thin lines just going across the, the canvas. So look, just really sharp. And what that should do is because we've got the big ones at the bottom of the painting and these really thin ones, it will look like the ocean is sort of fading off into the distance. So again, it's to create perspective and cheat. So all these little art tips that I'm giving you, you can use them to create the perspective. Again, there's a few paintings on water in the playlist. There's lots of paintings on how to paint water and how to paint waves if you're struggling at home. So look, all we're doing, we're really thin lines, just so it looks like those waves are fading out. And the great thing about that tape, it'll create a nice straight horizon. So look at that, look how easy this is. Because of that underpainting, we did all the hard work at the beginning when we were struggling with that sky. It's all paying off now. So look, we're just having all these little divots. Try to make them as flat as you can. Mine aren't too flat. <laughs> Mine are a bit wonky. Oh, must have had a scotch for breakfast. Only joking. <laughs> so look, here we go. So look, there we go. This is looking awesome. Look how realistic that looks. And it's all from the colours underneath. So that's what I was saying at the beginning. Take your time when blocking in. And then we'll remove our tape and we should have a perfectly straight horizon. Mine's a bit chalky and a bit rough, um, which we can fix uh, uh, later. We can remove the ch chalk. But if you do get a bit of paint removed, if you just try to match the colours, you can just go over the top. So if it does pull up a bit of the paint. Now, if you think the boat is closest to the viewer, so it's almost going to be silhouetted because it's far away from the sun. So we're going to add some black and some cobalt blue together. So plenty of black and cobalt blue to get a Prussian blue. So Prussian blue is just black and blue, really. And we're going to use our flat brush and we're going to create a more of a silhouette behind the boat. So if you imagine behind this boat, it's getting hardly any sunlight. It's almost silhouetted. And we're going to use that black and blue just to create some thicker divots, I think. Make the wash of the wave look harsher, I think. And what it does as well, by saving our darkest darks to the foreground, it brings it closer to the viewer. So if you imagine this really dark black and blue, it's bringing this boat, so it almost looks like we're trying to catch up with it. It's really close to us. Whereas all the pastel clouds and stuff, it pushes far, far off into the distance. So we want to have this boat looking like it's sailing out into the ocean. And again, look, you can do the trick where you can use this darker color in the corners. We want a sign in this corner, so we want it nice and dark. 
I always use a white pen to sign. I don't actually use a brush, I use a pen because it's easier to get a nice flat signature. I find if I'm trying to write with a uh, brush, it looks really unneat. But by having dark corners, it lets your signature stand out more. And again, it just draws the viewer's eyes to the middle. So that all we're doing, we're using that black and blue just to create some more harsher waves just here at the bottom. And then while we've got that color, why not let's just block in the bottom of the boat. So this is the darker shade of the boat. You can have a dark bum, why not? And then we could use that on this edge of the sail. So by using cobalt blue with the black, it's not quite black. You've still got plenty of cobalt blue. What it does is it creates a nice silhouette that looks realistic and it doesn't look too cartoony. If you use just black, it will look cartoony. So by adding a little bit of cobalt blue, another little tip for you guys at home, it just stops your work looking more comic-y and a bit cartoony. So let's put in the bit where everyone sits. So you have the back here, don't you? And normally the wheel is, and everyone sits, has a beer, <laughs> as a, as a, has some food, and then you normally have a little window up towards the sail, don't you? So while that's drying, I'm going to get some yellow and white, so some cad yellow and a little bit of white to make a Naples yellow, and I'm just going to put some highlights here on the boat. So the boat is normally white, isn't it? They normally paint yachts white so it reflects the sunlight. Because it's in the sun, we want it to be the colour of our sky. So we're going to use that yellow and lots and lots of white. We're just going to put a highlight here just on this boat. Just so it looks like it's really glowing. And then we're going to create this color, which is a really light brown. So we're going to mix cobalt blue and burnt umber together. So cobalt blue and burnt umber and lots and lots of white. And you want to add more brown than you do blue. So plenty of burnt umber, so lots of white, and a little bit of cobalt blue. And we should get this nice gray light brown. So like a nice or browny gray. And if you imagine, if you think of when you look at pure white, sometimes it's in the shade. So by using this nice gray, what it does is it just looks like an area of the sail of the mast, I guess, that's in the shade. So you normally have like a big sail that sort of wraps around the mast, doesn't it? So all we're going to do, we're going to use this cool gray just to block in our mast. Uh, if you're ever nervous about painting straight lines, you can use the flat edge of that flat brush. I'm just using a fine liner. But if you find it easier, you can use the flat brush that we use for the waves, because that's really easy to do straight lines. And another little tip at home, if you find it really hard, you can always use tape. So if you've got any painting tape at home, just line it up and then just paint around the edge or you could use an edge of an envelope or something and you can or a ruler and you can create nice straight lines so we're just using this nice cool gray here in the inside of the sail so again it's just to make it look like an area that's getting some sunlight and i'm just gonna get some of that black and blue i'm just gonna add a little bit of purple and brown to it so black blue, purple and brown just to make it a nice darker blue and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of pink and brown to that just to warm it up and a tiny bit of orange. So I've got a cool bluey black and I've got some with pink and orange in it and we've got a nice juxtaposition of colours we've got the warm colours and then the cool colours. So we got the reason we're putting this sort of crimsony colour 
is we're trying to have areas that look like they're in the sunlight and getting heat, just like we did with the sky. And we're trying to have some areas that are cool and getting less sunlight, so they're more in shade. And again, it's just trying to gauge it. Sometimes when I'm doing these tutorials out of my head, I'll kind of have a rough idea of what I want to do. And sometimes when you lay the paint down, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So we're just going to try it. We'll see, we'll come down that mask and create that sort of warm silhouette. So that's sort of the hot area fading into the lighter gray. So what I'm doing, just blending it while it's wet. Don't worry if it's scruffy. We just want to sort of gauge the colors, see if it works more. So I'm just coming down into that lighter gray that we mixed. And then what we could do, look, we can have some of the areas that are less in the sun. Just giving that sort of nice hint just on the edges. Again, look, just go around the edges. Just look at certain areas in the shade. And then we're going to get the darker shade. Just neaten this area up. So as I say, I'm doing it freehand. But if you're nervous, just take your time. You can use the flat edge of a brush. So I'm just trying to get that curve in the sail with that dark colour. So this outer edge is really silhouetted. So I kind of like the dark colour. I think the dark colour works. I think that, but I think that crimsony grey that we're using is just a bit too dark. It's not warm enough, is it? I think that sunlight would be really, really hot. Make it a bit more orangey. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But let's block this nice sharp edge in first. So we'll come all the way down here. So it's looking cool. The dark color is nice. And I like the light gray. I think it's just a bit, the crimson's a bit dark. Right, so I'm gonna get some cerulean blue and just add a little bit to that mix. So I'm just going back to that gray, but I'm just adding a little bit of cerulean blue just to make it a bit lighter. Oh, sorry, it's a bit darker, a bit more bluey. So as I was saying to you earlier, sorry it was a bit off camera, anything like blues and purples are really, really good for cooling an area. And then with our black and blue that we mixed earlier, I'm just outlining the mast. So I'm just using a fine liner. And I'm just using some of that black and blue just to outline the bottom of the mast. So again, this area would be silhouetted. Because the other layer is still wet, it's just merging so it's not as harsh. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the grey just here on the edge. Again, just to give it an outline, but again, not so harsh because it's more in the sun. So just by using a lighter colour in that light grey, we can just outline it. And then let's get some of that black and blue. Now I know where everything is going to be. Just make that edge, just go over it again. So just like the highlights, if you want to darken areas, just, you sometimes just go over them twice. If you want to make it less bobbly, sometimes with canvas, because it is bobbly, you just have to go over it twice. You can see here when we're this zoomed in, you can see all the little creases in the canvas. So I'm just going to paint a mask right on the tip of the top and I'll zoom out so you can see it. So what I'm doing is just creating a straight line right at the top of the mast and if I zoom out for you there you go you can see it. So I've just done a little black line and I'm just going to get some orange and yellow and I'm just going to add it to that grey. So I'm just going to add some orange and yellow to this area. 
I'm just going to heat it up like I was saying to you. I think because the sun's orange and the sunlight is beaming through, this area would be really warm. So even though it's silhouetted, so just by colouring it in with just a bit more orange and yellow, you can just sort of glaze that, this area and just make it look a bit more. It's in the heat. So it looks better, I think. So all I'm going to do is just come down. Because I think it just looks a bit cartoony. And I want it to look more silhouetted. So just by having this warm colour, it looks like the sunlight's peeking through. And then if we get some purple and white and some brown, so purple, white and brown, we can create this sort of silvery grey. There we go, so purple, white and brown. So just like we did on the mast earlier. And then I can just blend these two together. So if we go up about middle of the sail, there we go. It looks scruffy here. This is what I sent you about the the canvas. And just to merge the two, look, I'm just going to mix the two colours together. So I'm going to mix that orange and yellow with that light grey, and just create a bridge tone in the middle, and just bridge the two together. So while it's wet, I'm just going to go into that darker shade and at the bottom go into the lighter grey and then I'm just going to put some bright cad yellow here now we've got our sail in place I'm just going to put some cad yellow on the ocean behind it and the same here right up to the thing you can see look you can see my horizons a bit scruffy where the tape pulled off so we'll neaten that up in a minute and then all I'm going to do, I'm just going to create some little divots look, coming in, just like these waves. Again, just so it looks like the water is shimmering. So I'm just creating some little divots. So now we've got our mask sort of in place. We can have some little divots behind it to create that shimmer of the water. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just creating little lines. Really easy. Excellent. And then we're going to get some yellow and a little bit of orange. Mine keeps drying. So lots of yellow, a little bit of orange. There we go. So we're going to mix that together, get plenty on your brush. And then what we're going to do, we're going to get our flat brush and we're just going to create some sort of divots coming out from the middle. So just coming out either side, just sort of glazing, sort of a glow. Just so it matches the sky behind. So watch out for your sail. As I said, we can neaten it up afterwards. We just want to create sort of a sort of glow coming out either side from the middle. So there we go, come down here. Just where it's fading off around our boat. Just make sure it's nice and even either side. And then when you're happy with that, we're going to get some yellow and white. So we're going to make some of that Naples yellow. So lots and lots of white and a little bit of cad yellow. And then we're just going to create some shimmer on the water. So again, we've got our flat brush. And this time, rather than doing dark sort of shadows for the caps of waves, we're going to do shimmer using the exact same technique of the divots. So we've got this flat brush and we've got lots and lots of white with a little bit of yellow. And we're just going to create some little sort of sparkles in our water. So we're just coming out from the center. So that all we're doing, we're just going to try to create the illusion. If I zoom out so you can see it a bit better. So you can either use the flat brush or you can use a fine liner, whatever is easiest for you. I'm just going to use a sharp fine liner. And all I'm doing, I'm just trying to create the little sparkles you see on the water. 
It looks so pretty. So I'm just going round the dark waves, I'm just creating little lines and little splats. So there we go. You see how that underpainting now is starting to look so good? And now we've got these the detailed waves, and now we're going to put the sparkles. But it's the colour underneath, that orange into the blue, that's the thing that's tricking your eye. Now we're putting the detail on the top. So there we go. Let's have some either side. So it's looking lovely, our little sparkles. So just take your time, relax. Again, if you have to go over them twice just to make them look vibrant, just do that if you want to. You can always pause the video. So now we've got all our sparkles, and we've got this nice central focus point. We're just going to get some orange and purple. So, orange and purple. And we're just going to, just at the tip of the boat, sort of where it becomes like a triangle, we're just going to outline it in a bit of a warmer colour, because this tip of the boat would be getting all the sunlight. So even though it's got an outline, we want to just create that, and we just want to create an outline on this edge. So it's that warmer colour, because that would be sort of getting all the sunlight. So again, look, if you want to want to heat areas up in the sunlight, you just use warm colours. So there we go. And then where the sun is sort of poking through the mast, it would bleach a bit of the mast and it would look like it's coming through it. So what we're going to do, we're going to use some of that orange and purple just here where the sun is. Just so it looks like the heat is coming through, and then we're just going to get a bit of white, and we're just going to put a bit of the mast away, and sort of make a little chomp out of it, like a, like a circle out of it. So imagine you took a bite out of it, and it sort of looks like the sun is coming through. And again, just a little bit of cad yellow around that edge of the sun. It's a bit messy, we'll go over it in a minute, but can you see the effect? Can you see how that looks? Oh, this is all getting so good. And then we're going to swap to a really, really thin fine liner, just so we can do the sort of really sharp detail now. So again, look, if, if you dry your painting, we're going to use black now. So we're just going to use pure titanium, um, excuse me, ivory black. So just pure black. You can use Mars black if you want to. And I'm using a really sharp fine liner. We're just going to put some detail on our mast. We're just going to have some little ridges and bits. So as I say, if you dry your work and you make a mistake, you can use a baby wipe because black is a bit unforgiving. So if um, you use a baby wipe, you can just wipe it away. So look, I'm just doing a line coming down here. So there we go. Just joining in. So this could be a bit of a wire from the mask. Look, and if you didn't like it, just wipe it away. So that's the great thing. If you dry your work at stages and you do make a mistake, you can just wipe it away. And if you get a little black line like I've got, you can just use a bit of paint and paint over it. So it's just to show you, I always try to leave these bits in the video. Um, I deliberately did that and then just wiped it away because I'm just trying to show people. The great thing about acrylics is, as I say to you, if you dry your work, if you do make a mistake, don't get the rage. Just wipe it away with a baby wipe. So just have little sharp lines just coming out from the mast. So again, this brush does it all for you. You can pick up one of these fine liners for about a buck, for about a pound, a dollar. So I'm gonna put a really sharp black line this side, but where the sun is, just like the mast, I'm gonna leave a little bit so it looks like, look, it's poking out but I'm not going to have all of it go straight through to the mask because I want it to look like the sun is bleaching through it. 
So again here at the bottom, so say, just take your time. And we're just outlining areas, just giving it that nice sharp silhouette. Same this side, so we can get a bit of shade, getting a sharp edge. Yeah, on the bottom of the sail. So this brush is fantastic for detail. It's really, really good for things like if you're painting sharp buildings, straight lines, anything like tree branches. So that's looking awesome. So now he's got the dark um, outline. I'm just going to get a bit more black. So I'm just going to get plenty of black and a bit of cobalt blue. And I think I'm just going to bring it a little bit forward towards the viewer. So I'm just going to make some of these waves a bit harsher to make it look like it's trundling through the, the ocean. So I'm just going to make these a bit harsher. Just so the the wash behind the boat looks a bit a bit darker. So if you've ever been on a on a yacht or on a sailboat, and another boat passes, you get this sort of roller coaster sort of effect where you get caught up in their wash. It's really cool. <laughs> you sort of bubble up and down for a minute. You get some big waves. So there we go, so again, look, just using the harsher colour just to darken it up. And bring that closer towards the viewer. But it's exactly the same technique, just using that flat brush. So just having some more diagonal coming out from the bow in the middle. And either side. Just a little tad. That looks a lot harsher, doesn't it? Makes it look a little bit more comical, a bit more comic like, but I think it's just brings it forward a bit more. So just going out to the detail, and like I say, I'm just making the waves really flat as they go out into the sea. Big ones around the boat. And then more flat, thinner ones look as we go out towards the ocean. So we go. And I'm just going to put a little bit of white just here on this corner. I'm just going to smear it with my finger just so it looks like a bit of the sunlight's reflecting onto the corner of that sail. And then just to finish her off, we're going to get some white and some purple. So just a tiny bit of purple, lots of white, a little bit of cad yellow, so a little bit more purple. So plenty, plenty of white. And what we're trying to do, we're going to create some, a little bit of sky. So I'm just going to put a dot of orange, just for a little bit of heat. So I'm just going to create a pastel colour. And I'm just going to poke some holes in the sky. So in between some of these clouds, just using this sort of purpley yellow colour just to poke some holes into the clouds just so it looks like some background sky is shining through so again it's just like a bridge between that really bright orange and that really pastel blue just by using the purpley yellow we don't get the green sky and you also just sort of bridge the two areas together now we've got our mast and everything in. So as I say, it's just going round the layers, 
just making everything look really cool and then while we've got that color why not do some more shimmers just here in the water so a little bit darker because it's got a little bit hint of the purple in it it's a little bit cooler so that sort of works doesn't it that sort of joins these areas together so same technique we just try and create little shimmers on the ocean water just to give our sunset over the ocean painting a little bit more realism so we're just coming out from the center and if we do it one side we just want to match it on the other side just it's all nice and symmetrical don't want it looking wonky and if you can notice see the horizon I've just neatened it up just off camera just to get rid of all that where the paint had ripped when we removed the tape so all I've done is just neatened it up so you can again just the horizon just looks all nice and smooth so all these little professional finishes just make everything look really pretty so there we go we've got our shimmer down to a T and then we're just going to get some of our cobalt blue and black so cobalt blue and black go back to our really fine liner we're just going to have some of the ropes that hang down from the sails so if you've ever been on a sailboat or a yacht you have the winches and you have all the sort of ropes for the, when you pull down the sail so by using this really spindly fine liner look we can get really sharp lines look at that really really easy This could be our ropes coming down from the mast. And then I'm going to get some blue and black. So blue and black. More blue than black, so. A tiny bit of brown and purple. So blue, black, tiny bit of brown, and tiny bit of purple. And all I'm going to do, just in the corner here, I'm just going to glaze it. So like I was saying earlier, you can do it with hot, so you can do it with colds. Because that's where I want to sign it. And just here in the bottom corner, I don't want to make it too dark. So again, look, if your painting is dry and you go a bit OTT, you can use a baby wipe. And just rub it away. I still want some of that lighter cerulean blue. I just wanted to make the corners just a tad darker. And especially here on the left because that's where I'm going to sign it. And again, it's just to get the viewer to focus down the middle by making my corners nice and dark. And I think she's finished. So I've signed her in the bottom left-hand corner with my white pen. So we've got this lovely central point with the glow coming through the mast. You've learned how to use heat and how to do the shimmer on the water where we've got the white going into the yellow, going into the orange, going into the cooler colors. You've learned how to paint waves with a flat brush. We've got our darkened corners to focus your eyes towards the middle. We've got a lovely outline. We've got these cool greys and we've got these warm oranges in our mast and on our sailboat and our yacht. We've got the darkened clouds with the brighter highlights and you've learned how to paint sunbeams. So all in all, we've covered loads today to create this super realistic painting in what, just under an hour and 20 minutes. So my name's Murray. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already because it really helps the channel get seen by other artists. Don't forget to tag me with your version of the tutorials at M Stuart Paintings on Instagram and happy painting everyone and see you soon. Bye now.